Happy Sabbath once again to each one of you. I have a very, very important, serious message for, for those of us who are here, especially if you are a Seventh-day Adventist. You believe that Jesus is coming again. If I were to ask you, according to the Apostle Paul, what is one of the signs that we should look for prior to the second advent of Jesus Christ? Uh, Brother Daniel, can you say that louder? Falling away. Falling away. Now, I gave you the, uh, where to find the answer. I said according to the Apostle Paul. According to the Apostle Paul. There are many signs in the Bible. But one of the main signs that is even more important for the remnant, for Seventh-day Adventists, is the falling away. Of all the signs, the falling away is the most important. Why? Why is that one the most important? Quickly. Very good. My brother, it says, after the falling away, the men of sin will be revealed. In what context that the Apostle Paul mentioned the falling away? In what context? It was in the context of the second coming of Jesus Christ. Remember this? That's Second Thessalonians chapter 2. That will be our background there for this study. Let's have a word of prayer. Loving Father God, which art in heaven, Father, as I've been studying, researching, and dwelling upon this study, the condition of things in our world and in our church, I look at myself as well, wondering if I am ready, are we ready? As the Apostle Paul also mentioned in the book of Acts chapter 20, there's a huge problem in the midst of Seventh-day Adventists. Many of us will not be ready because of what is taking place in our midst, not so much because of what's taking place outside, but you have warned us. Father, I pray in a special way for your Holy Spirit presence. Press upon our mind. Lord, remove all the distractions. And I pray in a special way as well that whatever issues, anything that we have been dealing with for the past few days, weeks, whatever it might be, at this moment in time, that we will surrender every thought and taking them into captivity, surrendering all of them to you, so that we may understand very clearly what is going on in our heart, in our mind, in our church. Lord, once again, this mortal man is not worthy to stand before your people to speak. But if you could use a donkey, I believe that you could use me. Not worthy, but by your grace, we ask that you would bless us now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. As I stated a moment ago, our background will be Second Thessalonians chapter 2. And you are welcome. I have quite a bit to cover. I might go over my time. But bear with me, amen? You came to church, right? Yes. And you want to know what is truth, as Jesus tells us that he is the way, the truth, and the life. Whatever we are going to do, we must do it quickly. quickly because we have but a, 
In other words, whatever we can digest, whatever information that we can get to help us to be better prepared for the second coming of Jesus Christ, let us take it patiently. I would like to begin here on the screen. Notice carefully with me what we read here. This is from the Adventist News Network. Adventist News Network, the headline says, The World Church celebrates the official opening of the 61st General Conference session. This article came out June 7, 2022. The much-anticipated reunion of the Adventist World Church has finally arrived. After two consecutive postpone postponements of the planned GC session, Monday, June the 6th, notice the date there, June the 6th, as I covered this before, it started June the 6th. June is the sixth month of the year, and then the sixth day of the month, and then it lasts from June 6th through 11, another six days. So what do you have there? 666. Six, six, six. Coincidence? No. Accident? No. They've been planning the GC session for seven years. Remember, it was supposed to take place in 2020, but because of the pandemic, they were too afraid. It was postponed, then we postponed, and two years later, now we're having it. So that means they had quite a bit of time to think about the date yes. when they were going to have this. Coincidence, brothers and sisters, June 6th for a duration of six days, 666. No, the Jesuits put that together. Let's continue. And then notice the next word, June 6th marks. I would say, indeed, those words are not by accident. Then it says the commandments of the 61st, 7th day Adventist General Conference, GC session in St. Louis, Missouri. That was a misery there. What an important meeting this is. By God's grace, here we are, said President of the GC, Ted Wilson. Although it has been seven years since the last session occurred, this first ever hybrid session promises to be another historically meaningful event for our church. Another historically meaningful event for our church. Does that mean we are going to be progressively moving forward? Does that mean now we are going to follow the old paths according to Jeremiah chapter 6, verse 16? Another reference there, another background to keep in mind. Jeremiah 6, verse 16. Does that mean that we are going to do it God's way now? Let's move on. Next article, headline says, The World Church Celebrates the official opening of the 61st General Conference Session. It says, well, that's the same article. It goes on to say, I'm Friendly, Black, and Nelson, talking about Dwight, uh, Dwight Nelson, very black, collaborated on a shared message entitled, Seeking the... Pay attention now. What are the words? Seeking the Holy Spirit. How? Together, in prayer, music and the word noting the significance of seeking god's presence so in other words they want god presence to cover that place let's continue through worship and prayer on may 3rd then the global church began 40 days of prayer which is set to conclude this saturday June 11th. Remember? We're talking about... What's today's date? Are, are you sleeping? No. Okay, today's June 11th. Okay. Then it says, Additionally, moments for partnered and group prayer were held during morning worship, inviting the, again, the Holy Spirit to lead the meetings this week they want the holy spirit to fill up that place similarly we read another background acts chapter 2 when the holy spirit filled up the place 
where the disciples were meeting at, were worshiping at. What was the difference then? The Bible says, again, let me take you there, Acts chapter 2. What was the difference? I heard power. Yes, what else? What? Why did the power come? One accord. Verse 1. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. One accord. What was it like before this? Among the disciples, that is. What was it like before? Division, right? Fighting for position, right? But Jesus told them, that's Acts chapter 1, go and wait in Jerusalem for the promise of the Father. That is the Holy Spirit. What was the problem? Remember, 40 days plus 10 days later, that's the day of Pentecost there. What was the problem? Well, they were not ready. The disciples were not ready then to receive the Holy Spirit. They needed to be in one accord, one purpose, one mission. Amen? One purpose, one mission, one accord. They needed to get victory over self, over sin, before they could gain the victory over Satan and the world. Amen? As long as they were fighting against each other, that was not going to happen. As long as they were not in unity of the faith or in the faith, that was not going to happen. Now remember, God, through John the Baptist, prior to the first advent of Jesus Christ, had already cleansed the church. Remember the message of John the Baptist. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. There was already a few, just a few, that had responded to the call, to the message of John the Baptist to receive the Messiah. Just a few, a very few, to receive the Messiah. And when Jesus came, again, there was another cleansing of the sanctuary. Well, Jesus literally cleansed the sanctuary with his whip. Amen? There was a few, again, that were ready to stand up for the truth. But still, this few, this nucleus of people, were lacking something. And that's why in Acts chapter 1, Jesus told them that what they needed, which led us to the book of Acts chapter 2 now, it says that they were in one accord. Selfishness was no longer an issue among the disciples. Amen? Fighting for position. Now, their focus was Christ and Christ alone. They were completely dead to self, to sin, to the world, and they were ready to face Satan now on this spiritual battlefield. Amen? Amen. Without that, we cannot conquer. What is the theme, one of the themes, I should say, for the GC session this year? Do you know? Beside Jesus is coming. Notice they say Jesus is coming, but they did not include uh, soon or imminent. Well, beside that, but what is the other theme? Do you know? Have you been paying attention? The other theme is if you watch their nth intro, is unity. Unity. As a matter of fact, I'm going to play a clip for you where Ted Wilson, means he, him, Ted Wilson himself is going to talk about unity. But you're going to hear in the context or in what context he's going to mention the word unity. Not in the context of truth, but in the context of the way the world is moving along. Brothers and sisters, again, as we quoted there, another theme there for the GC session was the Holy Spirit. Power to fall upon that place. In other words, a call for revival and reformation, as Ted Wilson loves to say. 
Revival and Reformation. Now, again, there was a passage. Let me take you there. 2 Corinthians chapter 3. When you are calling upon the Holy Spirit, notice what the Holy Spirit does. Listen carefully now and pay attention carefully. I'm going to go kind of quickly because I have quite a few things to cover. Today, you're going to have to miss your lunch. Amen? You're going to have to miss your lunch. Listen carefully. It says in 2 Corinthians chapter 3 with me, speaking of the Holy Spirit, key word or verse, I should say, key verse there to remember as we move along. Notice in verse 17. Are you there? Amen. Verse 17. The Bible says, Now the Lord is that Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, what are the next three words? There is liberty. So, one of the themes of the GC session is the Holy Spirit power. So, if the presence of the Holy Spirit is going to be there, what must also come with that? Liberty, according to what Paul says. Because the truth shall set us free. Liberty. In other words, this is also referring to freedom of conscience. Freedom to worship God according to a thus say of the Lord, the dictate of your heart. Amen? Amen? According to your conviction, right? Yeah. Let's add another one here. Let's go to the Old Testament this time. Isaiah, where are we heading to now? Isaiah chapter 61. Notice in Isaiah with me, chapter 61. They have been praying for what again? Holy Spirit power. Isaiah chapter 61. Notice what the... Bible tells us here in verse 1. Are you there? Amen. The Spirit of the Lord, God, is upon me. For what reason? Because the Lord have anointed me to do what? To preach good tidings unto the meek. He have sent me to bind up the brokenhearted. What else? To proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. In other words, freedom, amen? amen? Because Paul says, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is what again? Liberty. liberty. And verse 2 says, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God to come forth all that morning. Notice carefully, Verse 2 says, to come, or to proclaim rather, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Now for us living in these last days, now we know that this was partly referring to the first advent of Jesus Christ. But for us living in these last days, we were given the third angel's message to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, the second coming. And then it described, the second part of verse 2 describe. When probation closes for the world and for the church. Because it says, and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all that moon. The day of vengeance means when probation closes for all of us, the church and the world. And the vengeance of God, the seven last plagues, will come down upon those who have rejected Jesus Christ as their personal savior. That is our message. Third angel's message describes that very clearly. Those who worship the beast and his image will receive the mark of the beast and will experience the wrath of God. Right? That's very clear. Let's add Galatians. Go back to the New Testament, chapter 5 of Galatians. Notice what it says again. We have a message, right? To proclaim freedom, victory over sin, right? The Spirit of the Lord empowers us to do so. Notice in chapter 5 of the book of Galatians. I said Galatians, but I went to Ephesians, sorry. Let me go back now to Galatians. Notice in verse 1 of the book of Galatians, chapter 5. Are you there? Amen. The Bible says, Stand fast, therefore... Notice the words again, very similar to what we read before. 
Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Christ has set us free. So no matter what the world tries to throw at us, what must we do? Stand fast, it says. Don't go back to the bondages of the world. Why? Because Christ has set me free. Amen? You believe that, right? Let's add, let me see here. Let's add uh, verse 13 to that. It says, For brethren, ye have been called unto, what's the word again? Liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. I will come back to verse 13 again in a moment. Verse 13 is very important for us in light of what I'm about to share with you. Again, so going back to what the Apostle Paul says in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is what again? Liberty. Liberty. And they are praying for what again? The Holy Spirit power. So there must be liberty of conscience there as well, right? Let's go ahead and play clip number one. And I'd like for you to turn up the volume as well. Let me... Volume, please. Leading up to the general conference session, we have had the 40 days of prayer, a time when we have asked the World Church to pray for the presence of the Holy Spirit right here in our hearts, covering this dome, covering the convention center. All right. Praying for the Holy Spirit power to come right here in our heart, covering this dome, covering everybody there now if you're going to pray for the holy spirit power if you are going to come to god you must come with a humble heart right keep that in mind let's go ahead and go to clip number two let me know when you're ready leading up to the general conference session we have had the 40 days of prayer a time when we have asked the World Church to pray for the presence of the Holy Spirit right here in our hearts, covering this dome, covering the convention center. Okay. Now, sounds like the same thing we just read a moment ago. Then he's going to say, to secretly, he's going to invite everyone to secretly join him in this plea for the Holy Spirit, inviting everybody. Clip. Let, let's go to the next one. When you're ready. Ready? We pray that God's Spirit will be felt in a magnificent way, for our mission is clear. Jesus is coming soon. And he intends for all of us to be involved in his work until he comes. I encourage you to pray for the Holy Spirit in a very special way as we move into this special time of prayer and of reconciliation, of reformation, of humility, that those who will be assisting us in this will facilitate. All right. Again, another plea to pray for the Holy Spirit power. I want you to get context here. Now, again, this is a very important GC session. He says we need the Holy Spirit. Now, notice the next clip here as he's about to pray. Let me know when you're ready. And as Pastor Mark Finley, Pastor Barry Black, Pastor Dwight Nelson, Pastor Page, and others lead us into that, 
I want to ask that you will sacredly join in this plea for the Holy Spirit. Okay, secretly join in this plea to seek the Holy Spirit. Now, on the screen, you can see where I have some, uh, this arrow here and those two words. Watch carefully as he's about to pray and invite everyone to pray with him and to stand and to pray with him. Let's go ahead and go to the next clip. Oh, hold on. Hold on, let me go back to my screen here. Okay, let's go. Before we begin, I ask that you stand and we will have prayer. Our gracious Father in heaven, today is an important day. Are you playing the same one? Yeah, let's go to this one. Let's, let's, yeah, play it again. You, it's the same one. Go ahead, you can play. Before we begin, I ask that you stand and we will have prayer. Our gracious Father in heaven, Today is an important day. It's good. It's good. Did you let it play all the way? Okay. Did you notice something here that was wrong? Did you notice it? What was wrong? Anybody saw what was wrong here? Can you imagine seeking for the power of the Holy Spirit? And then standing the way they were standing? Hmm? Say that again. You prostrate yourself, right? My brothers and my sisters, which power that they are really seeking for to empower them? Which power? Because according to what Spirit of Prophecy says, go to this slide here. Are you there? Notice on the screen. Listen to what we read here. This is from Science of the Time, July 15, 1908. In the Savior's last recorded prayer for his disciples, we are given an inspiring view of the divine and human that combine in the nature of Christ. Behold, the kneeling form in the shadow of Olivet, as a humble, notice the word humble there, as a humble suppliant, the Savior pleads for strength for himself and for his disciples in the coming struggle. He's with strong crying and tears he pleads in behalf of those whom he has called out from the world to give the message of salvation to men. I have given them thy word, Christ says, and the world hath hated them. He pleads, I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is what? Truth. Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word. So, how did Jesus show the disciples how to pray? Kneeling. Kneeling. Remember he quoted John 17 17 there, sanctify them through thy truth, thy word is truth. Remember also Jesus says to the woman at the well that there is a time coming that whosoever worship the Father must worship him how? In spirit and in truth. There is a way to worship God, or I should say the right way to worship God, and there's the wrong way, right? There is the right way, there is the wrong way. Now let's add another passage here on the screen. 
Listen now from Prophets and Kings, pages 47 and 48. May God teach his people how to pray. Let the teachers, notice the teachers, in our schools and the ministers in our churches learn daily in the school of Christ. Then they will pray with earnestness and their requests will be heard and answered. Then, listen now, the word will be proclaimed with what? In what context this was said? In the context of learning how to pray. Then it says that the word will be proclaimed with power. Then it says, listen, both in public and in private worship, it is our privilege to do what? Bow on our knees before the Lord. When we offer our petitions to him, Jesus, our example, does what? Kneeled down. And what else? Prayed. Of his disciples, it is recorded that they too kneeled down and prayed. Then it says, true reverence for God is inspired by a sense of his infinite greatness and a realization of his presence with this sense of the unseen, every heart should be deeply impressed. So Jesus taught his disciples how to pray, how to come before God, humble yourself before the shadow of the Almighty, and he shall what? Lift you up, right? We have to go down, go low, right? So that he can lift us up. What saith Paul in Philippians chapter 2 in regard to Christ's attitude when it comes to humility, right? And loneliness. Hmm? Let this mind be whom? In whom? In you. Which was also where? In Christ Jesus. What did he do? He humbled himself, right? He came in the form of a man and humbled himself even to the point of death, even the death of the cross. He humbled himself, brothers and sisters. And then, what else, if you are there, what else it goes on to tell us in Philippians chapter 2? After Christ humbled himself, even uh, accepted the death of the cross. He was exalted, right? And at the name of Jesus, that every knee shall bow, every tongue Confess that Jesus is what? Lord, Lord of Lord. We have to bow before him. Amen? Amen? We have to bow. But the leaders are standing up. And yet they are praying for whom? To whom? To the Holy Spirit. For the power of the Holy Ghost to fall upon them. And who stands up like this, by the way? You know what comes to my mind? The image of Nebuchadnezzar. And Nebuchadnezzar himself. Remember, isn't this my Babylon that I have built, right? He would not humble himself before God. And what did God do? He ate grass, but God humbled him. Amen? But the leaders are standing up, and then they are saying, Holy Spirit, come down. It sounds like the priest, the Roman Catholic priest, when they lift up this Eucharist, and then they say, at every Mass, we bring down Christ from his throne to our altar and we crucified him over and over again. That's what it sounds like. Again, let's continue. You're going to see. Keep in mind, Ezekiel chapter 8. The context here is, thou shalt see greater abomination than this. Remember, standing up to pray, right? Remember that. Now, let's go to the next clip as he was praying. Let me know when you're ready. Before we begin, I ask that you stand and we will have prayer. Our gracious Father in heaven, today is an important day. People from all over the globe have arrived. Some on site. Okay, watch. Some on site and others Did it through electronic connection. Do you see it? Did you see it? 
People are? Oh, how important was this? Huh? I thought we were supposed to reverently pray, right? No movement, right? But watch again. Let's go to the next clip. Watch again. Wait, let me know when you're ready. Before we begin, no, I ask one. that you stand and we will have prayer. the same one again. Go back to the We are one. here for... Go ahead, you can play. For we are here for your meeting. We are here for your direction. We are here for the Holy Spirit to direct as he wills from heaven. So again, you see people walking. That same man, when he started praying, walked this way in that direction and then went back the other way while the prayer was being offered to God, brothers and sisters. Mm. And then you saw the same pastor standing up tall, tall. No, you're supposed to go low. If you want the Holy Spirit power, you have to get down. You are just a man. You're not the, it's the, Pope, it's the Pope of Rome that does things like that. You have to go down, especially, especially when you are before the congregation. Now, one time, I have to confess, one time, I forgot to kneel down before the congregation. Well, one elderly lady from Jamaica, well, she let me have it. <laughs> that was in Florida. She let me have it. She said, Pastor, I have a bone to pick with you. I said, what did I do now? <laughs> she said, hey, the hey, Bible said this. I said, you know, you're right. <laughs> I had to apologize. Oh, she let me have it. Brothers and sisters, it shows humility. It shows true leadership as well. Amen? Amen? Because we are not worthy to come before the Almighty God. In ancient days, people would pour uh, ashes. They would get into sackcloth, bow before, in the dirt before God. Job, remember Job? That's how low we are. We have to go that low. David was on the ground. Say that again. David was on the ground, yeah. Yeah, yes, I remember that. Yeah, you're right. That's how low we must go if we really want the Holy Spirit power. Remember the two who went to the temple? Think about this. The two who went to the temple. One was a publican and the other one was a Pharisee. And the publican, the quote-unquote sinner, right? The Pharisees called him. When he went to the temple to pray, how did he pray? He bowed, right? But the first, he stood up and said, Look at me, I pay tithes and this and that. I'm not like this sinner over there. Isn't that the same thing we see seeing here? Again, same posture there from Elder Wilson. Standing up tall, just like the Pharisees. No, brothers and sisters. If you want the power of the Holy Spirit, you have to go down. Now, on the screen here, two days ago, I shared this video where not only as we just saw the way Elder Wilson was praying there, showing that God must come down to him instead of him going down before God, in the video, I shared the clip where, some clips, where Ted Wilson overruled something that he should not have gotten involved in unless he's a dictatorship or a dictator. He overruled you and I, the regular members, because we, the regular members, wanted the pestilent sorcery of Babylon issue to come up for a discussion, just as a discussion. 
The issue was brought up first by Jonathan, who was a delegate, and uh, he was explaining why that we must talk about this during the Jesus session. Notice on the screen with me what this says. This is from Adventist with you. Motion to add Babylon sorcery poison to the agenda defeated. What's the word? Delegate Jonathan Zirkel, center of your screen there, had presented a motion to amend. The pestilence has caused a lot of problems for our church and has caused a lot of problems for our members. Zirkel said, citing a document signed by thousands of Adventist church members, pastors, and health professionals, he made a request for the church to reconsider its stance on the Babylon sorcery, which is the poison that we read about in Revelation 18.23. I think it is very important we have a discussion on this. After the motion was seconded, and a couple of members spoke on behalf of the motion, GC President Ted Wilson went to the microphone to comment. Let's leave that on the screen for a moment. Notice it says that the motion received a second. Ah, very good. Somebody understand the rules here. That means it's legal. If it received a second, you cannot try to come in and try to change it or influence the delegates to either change it or vote no on it. You should not do that because it's not your church. It's God's church. You see, it's God's church. Christ was the one who shed his blood for the church. Amen? Amen. Very good. Thank you for bringing that up. According, for those of you watching online, my brother here says, according to the Constitution, it's the members that have the power not the leadership. But just like every election, worldly election, you don't really put anybody into office. The same way it was rigged in the U.S., the election was rigged in the U.S., it's the same way it has been rigged here as well. You don't really vote to put Ted Wilson into office. As a matter of fact, he was not re-elected, he was reselected. Just like Ganun Diab was reselected. I covered this two days ago, I believe it was. Ganun Diab was reselected as well. What a fine job he has done. Meeting with the Pope, bowing to the Pope in all kinds of ecumenical movement, and he was reselected. Yes, according to the papacy. Yes, he redefines that according to the papacy. When they talk about liberty, religious liberty, no, 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 no. Which religious liberty? There are two types of religious liberty. There's one religious liberty that is according to the papacy, whereas you have to be one with Rome. That's not the religious liberty we just read about in Christ Jesus, amen? Because as Protestants, we're supposed to be separate, right? That's freedom in Jesus Christ. And that was that religious liberty that Martin Luther exercised. Amen? When he nailed his 95 theses on the door of Wittenberg against the teaching of the Pope of Rome. Now, let's go ahead and play the clip by Delegate Jonathan expressing why he wanted that issue to come up to the floor. You ready? Uh, COVID has caused a lot of problems in our church. And it's caused a lot of problems for our members. I, um, I would like to propose that we discuss the position that the church has taken on the vaccines, specifically related to the statements of 2015 and 2021. Because of these positions that the church has taken, uh, many people have suffered. I have a document that was signed by 25,000 Seventh-day Adventists in 138 countries, by 1,929 pastors, and by 4,164 medical professionals. And they are asking that we reconsider our stance on vaccination. 
Mm, isn't that fair? He is advocating on behalf of many Seventh-day Adventists that have been marginalized, lost their jobs, right? Sick, even some have died as a result of the Babylonian poison. He is saying, can we have a discussion? Can you allow this to come up to the floor for a discussion? Just a discussion. And asking the General Conference to reconsider their position the, the, in their 2015 position of the poison and in 2021 position of the poison because it goes against our health message. What was the attitude? Let's go ahead and play the next clip there. Let me know when you're ready. You trying to figure out which one? Agenda, not to put that issue on the agenda. Listen, no, keep playing. D did you get the right one? No, you have to go back to the right one. I think you went too far. Huh? It's ready? Okay. Yep, let's play it. For the reasons that have already been, for the reasons that have already been just go ahead and play. For the reasons that if have already sure been one, enunciated play. by our chair, it is not a church manual item. Thirdly, it is not a fundamental belief item. Now, there may be individuals who will disagree with me and others, saying it is my fundamental right to be able to make a choice as to whether or not I wish to receive the vaccine, a vaccine, some vaccine, or not. And the General Conference has very much stood on the position that everyone should make their own decision. The General Conference has made a statement in regards to vaccine. All right, thank you very much. We will ask now Elder Wilson for... He plays the wrong one. Let's play the right one again. You ready now to play that? All right, thank you very much. We will ask now Elder Wilson for a comment. Shh. Can we stop that? My dear delegates and friends on site and online. Listen. In reference to the issue that has been brought up by a delegate regarding vaccine, uh, since it has been seconded, uh, it is fair enough for us to vote on that. But I want to strongly urge, and I have the consent and agreement of my fellow officer, Ayrton Kohler, my other fellow officer, Paul Douglas, that we stand united in asking this body not to put that issue on the agenda, not to put that issue 
on the agenda. So what did Ted Wilson do? He influenced the vote. And notice he said that he asked his colleagues, he talked to his colleagues to not bring up this issue on the floor. Mm. This is exactly where my thought was heading. I was about to say, and then you said it, but I was about to say, looking at the past two years, and even today, what has been the most important issue? Is it the church manual? Is it uh, whatever else they were doing there? What's that? Yeah, yeah. Whatever happened to that? Are we a people ready to, to meet Jesus? Or looking forward to the second coming of Jesus Christ? I don't think there has been an, anything over the past of two years that, have, that has been more important than this issue. Because many Seventh-day Adventists are struggling right now. Even the current crisis, the food crisis, gasoline prices, the war crisis... They are all tied in with the same issue that Jonathan wanted them to discuss. They are all together. They are all linked together to bring about a time of trouble like there never was. To bring about starvation. To bring about totalitarianism. To bring about eventually the mark of the beast. And this Babylonian sorcery has everything to do with the Sunday laws. With an S. To enforce the Sunday law. Singular. The purpose is. Well. Remember Elder Wilson says. Nothing like that is in the pipeline. At this present time. Don't worry about it. There's nothing in the pipeline. Now by the way. When Elder Wilson stand up. And the other GC leaders. And they are telling us. That the theme of GC. One of the themes. Is Jesus is coming again. Now, if you're going to be talking about Jesus is coming again, then you must go to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, amen? Yep. Yep. You must go to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Because Paul says, do not be soon shaken, right? Because this is what must take place before the second coming, amen? And beside the falling away, Paul says the men of sin must be revealed. Will they reveal the men of sin? Will they talk about the men of sin? During the GC session? Are they, if they're not going to talk about, if the men of sin will not be mentioned at the GC session, then those are just words. Because you cannot talk about the second coming of Jesus Christ without exposing the men of sin. You cannot do it. Because that's what Paul says. Those are not my words. Paul said them in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. And then if from verse 2 of 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, you continue to read and Paul vividly describe the characteristics of the men of sin. So that we will know for, without a shadow of a doubt who that man of sin is. So that, as Jesus says, Behold, I have told you before it comes to pass, so that when it comes to pass, ye might believe. Prophecies, right? God has not left us clueless in regard to the signs of the times, in regard to who the Antichrist is. Otherwise, we will be deceived, right? We will all be deceived if God has left us clueless about the devices and the plans of Satan, who the players are, all of us would have been deceived because we are no match on our own against Satan. Amen? Amen. That's why we have the word, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is, is truth. Will the men of sin, well, they only have just two days left. Will they mention the men of sin 
at the GC session. We haven't heard anything like that yet over the course of the five days so far. And today is their last day. Will they mention, will Ted Wilson deliver a message exposing the men of sin in the context of the second coming of Jesus Christ? But let me add this. Even if he were to mention that, it will still be a smoke screen. Because according to their position, their stand, it means nothing to them when it comes to Adventists being marginalized, losing their job, as I mentioned before. One brother in Australia reached out to me as this young lady was showing. He reached out to me because he has, a, well, at the time he was about to lose, to lose his job because the job required that he take the poison. And when he tried to tell his superiors about his conviction, his religious belief that he is a seven-day Adventist and we have a health message, you know what they said to him? We have read what your leaders have said in regard to the poison. So therefore, you have to take it. There's no excuse. No excuse. I had the same experience. You had the same experience, huh? Yeah, yeah. I went to check the website. Uh-huh. Yeah, um, I'm sure there's no support in the government. Yep, yep. Well, brothers and sisters, let's, conti uh, let's continue here. Let's see. Um, so Ted Wilson came up to influence the vote. He was not supposed to do this. That's illegal according to the GC laws. It was seconded. The motion was seconded. He was supposed to sit back, allow it to happen because this is not a dictatorship. Thank you, sister. <laughs> this is not a dictatorship. You are not king over us. Right? What's that? He think he is. So he got up angrily. You could you can see the his facial expression. He did not like it. He did not appreciate it. The fact that some of the members wanted this to come to a, to a, a discussion. My brothers and my sisters, let me take you to Ezekiel chapter 34. Where are we heading to? Ezekiel chapter 34. The leaders do not care about you, brothers and sisters. Listen now. In Ezekiel chapter 34, verse 1. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, prophesied against the shepherds of Israel, prophesied, and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God unto the shepherds, Woe be to the shepherds of Israel that do feed themselves. Should not the shepherds feed the flocks? Now we're talking about spiritual food here. Hmm? What? We're talking about spiritual food. Just switch it to his. We're talking about spiritual food, right? That's what Jesus mentioned in Matthew chapter 24. We read this a few Sabbaths ago. Where Jesus was, while he was describing signs of the times. And he said, blessed is the men of the house who give the flock meat. In due season, right? But the shepherds here are doing what? They are not feeding the flock. With what? Present truth. With the meat. With the spiritual manner. Ye eat the fat and ye clothe you with the wool. Ye kill them that are fed, by, but ye feed not the flock. Listen now. The disease have ye not strengthened. Listen carefully to verse 4. That should ring a bell as you try to connect that with our health message. Listen, it says, The diseased have ye not strengthened, 
neither have ye yield or healed that which was sick. Have we been experiencing a health crisis? What was the remedy that God has given us to face the pestilences in our world today? The health message, right? And His Word, amen? amen? The health message. Then the Bible says, Neither have ye bound up that which was broken, neither have ye brought again that which was driven away, neither have ye sought that which was lost, but with force and with cruelty have ye do what? Rule them. During the Shemdemic era, as the Bible says, the leaders did not seek that which was lost. They shut down the churches. That's right there in verse 4. It says, neither have ye sought that which was lost. They shut down the churches. No more evangelization. They would not seek for the loss. Even when some of our churches were open, you had to enter from one door and leave out the other door because the pestilence was waiting for you out there. You have to outsmart the pestilence, pestilence by going out the other door. And you have to wear the muzzle. Social distancing. And baptize people in masks. Mask. And you could not socialize. Quickly, after the service is over, go out through that door. Don't even spend time in the parking lot. I quoted all of that before. Don't spend time in the parking lot. Just go home. That's what verse 4 is describing here. During that time, neither have ye sought that which was lost. People are being lost, getting lost, spiritually speaking, every day. God does not take a break the same way the devil does not take a break. Jesus says, go and seek that which was lost. Now, the same leaders are telling you, Jesus is coming again. Really? Then it says, and they were scattered. We were scattered indeed, right? During the pandemic, right? Because we were not being fed by the shepherds, right? They were scattered because there is no shepherd. And they became meat to all the beasts of the field when they were scattered. Yes, brothers and sisters, the enemy scattered us. Instead of the leaders coming and standing up and bring us together, the leader tells us to, yes, accept the scattering of the enemy. And then what did the enemy do? Well, no shepherds were watching over the flock. And so therefore, some of our brothers and sisters have died as a result of this. I quoted this before. Some Adventists that have taken the poison, they died. Well, not only the shepherds were nowhere to be found, the shepherds, like Ted Wilson, for example, was putting out six-minute messages on YouTube and telling you to social distancing, wear your mask, and then telling you to take the poison. It's the same man that's telling you Jesus is coming again. Now, again, we are not talking about Ted Wilson's private life here. Don't get me wrong. We are all sinners, amen? But we're talking about what the organization is promoting. As Ezekiel says here, no shepherds. Then God says, now, you can imagine the tears in Jesus' eyes. He shed his blood for the church. In verse 6, it says, my sheep wandered through all the mountains and upon every hill. Yea, my flock was scattered upon all the face of the earth, and none did see, search, or seek after them. Oh, brothers and sisters, that reminded me of something. You know what were the shepherds seeking for doing the like down the pandemic? <laughs> Some of you might have experienced this, especially if you uh, uh, were in Jamaica or some of the islands or some of the uh, third world countries. 
Well, <laughs> this elder come and visit you <laughs> to pick up the tithes. <laughs> During the lockdown. No, no, no. No church gathering, but they made sure that they come to knock on your doors for the tithes and the offering. Yes, they were doing this. Isn't that what it says there? It says, my flock was scattered upon all the face of the earth, and none did search or seek after them. They were not seeking for the, for the flock's spiritual interests, well-being, but the money. Right? The tithes and offering. They were collecting this, knocking on the, your door, sending you emails, messages. Hey, we haven't received your tithes yet. Oh, but when will the church be open? Uh, we don't know, but you can still return your tithes and offering. Even though they were taking the What's that? Even though, Even though they were taking the furlough. Yeah, I heard. Even though they were taking the grant from the government. But they were still seeking after your tithes instead of your spiritual interests. Instead of defending Seventh-day Adventists. Listen, speaking of defending Seventh-day Adventists, notice what this tells us, that tells us here. Support worker set to lose job after refusing the Babylon sorcery poison on religious grounds. A support worker from Rochester says he will lose his job because he does not want to be taken the poison of Babylon on religious ground. As a Seventh-day Adventist, Mr. Bolus said he does not smoke, drink, maintaining near flawless health. He said, me and my wife are Seventh-day Adventists. As such, we believe that taking care of our bodies is our, what now? Christian duty. Oh, brothers and sisters. They wanted to stand up. They were not the only one who lost their job. Listen carefully. On the screen. This is after I published this video here a couple days ago. And I was also sharing how Adventists will have lost their job. And two, at least two Adventists shared this. They said, same here. The criminal company we work for quoted general conference stands on the poison. That is how we lost our jobs. They are telling lies. There's no option. I'd rather eat boiled sweet potatoes once every other day than to take the poison. And another one says, brother, I've lost my job also. I will not take the poison. Thanks for what you're doing. The general conference is a joke. Yes, sir. They have lost their job. Why? Because their employees read the GC statement on the poison and said, no, we cannot give you religious exemption because that's what your church says. And Ted Wilson is coming out and telling you that, well, you have the freedom to choose. Really? They were not given any freedom to choose? It's a smoke screen. It's a lie. He knows that once you go out there, the government will mandate it. Your job will mandate it. He knows that, but yet he's saying, well, the general conference did not mandate it. We did not enforce it. We tell people to follow your conscience. Really? Yeah, and what else? Listen, another reason why Jonathan was advocating for Adventists. Listen to what this says here on the screen. Another 18 British children are struck down with mysterious... Hepatitis of unknown origin. I wonder where did that come from all of a sudden? Health officials announce the new cases bringing the cumulative UK total to 240 since the first wave or first was spotted in January. UK HSA officials said there is no evidence that the Babylonian pestilence sorcery poison is involved. Yeah. And here's another one. It says, healthy young people are dying suddenly and unexpectedly from mysterious, notice the word again, mysterious, syndrome in Australia. Doctors baffled 
and seek answers. Australia is famous for its totalitarian pestilence, restrictions and Babylon sorcery poison mandate. The deputy premier of New South Wales boldly declared that even businesses that accept unpoisoned people will be subject to exceptionally heavy fines back in 2021 now the country is confronting an epidemic of sudden adult death syndrome the syndrome is tracking down healthy and active young people in australia yet ted wilson is going to tell you that oh we have given you the freedom to choose and they will not back down he will not back down brothers and sisters from the stand that they have made you have the freedom to choose. Can you find that clip? Make sure you get the right one. The one it says, you have the freedom to choose. Can you play that clip? You're going to see the title there. Look for it. It says, you have the freedom to choose. You will find those titles. Let's play that clip based on what we just read here. You're going to hear again Elder Wilson saying that, well, we did not mandate it. You have the freedom to choose. Did you find that? Find the one that says you have the freedom to choose. Bring it back to the screen. You found it? Let me know when you're ready. You ready? For the reasons that have already been enunciated ah. by yes. our chair, it is not a church manual item. Thirdly, it is not a fundamental belief item. Now, there may be individuals who will disagree with me and others saying it is my fundamental right to be able to make a choice as to whether or not I wish to receive the vaccine, a vaccine, some vaccine, or not. And the General Conference has very much stood on the position that everyone should make their own decision. The General Conference has made a statement in regards to vaccine. Okay, so you, you heard it again from Elder Wilson. We have given you the choice, right? To follow your conscience. As he just said, we are not mandating it, but the world sees it differently, brothers and sisters. Elder Wilson says, you have the freedom of choice, but I'm going to allow one Seventh-day Adventist to correct Elder Wilson at the GC session. That Seventh-day Adventist is going to say, the statement that is found, well, two statements, that is found in the 2015 GC stands on the poison and the 2020 and 2021 has made it impossible or have made it impossible for Seventh-day Adventists to seek for religious exemption. Listen carefully. Now, the clip we go, are going to play, I want to make sure you get this one right. It says, GC statement, we move religious freedom. You see that clip? GC st uh, statement, we move religious freedom. Let's play it. You ready? We go to um, Zoom 101. Grace, I think you spoke already, right? Hello? Y yes, you. Sorry, I was, I had yes, trouble. Sir. I mean, I was waiting to be unmuted. Thank you for letting me speak again. I just wanted to say that the state seems to think that there are objections of a religious nature with respect to the COVID vaccine. Also, saying in the negative that something is not religious is still making a religious statement. And here in Canada, although we have protection with respect to individual religious objections, there is a shift to require collective acts aspect, which is impossible to meet because of the way the statements are worded, because of the way the statements are worded. You heard it? And we would have freedom if there had been no statement, if there had been no statement. That would have allowed freedom of conscience, freedom of religion. And I know I have one minute and 15 seconds left, but I really don't have anything more to say. And so that does 
shift that into the basket of the session. It is a religious determination that's been made in the statements by saying it's not religious and it should be something that comes before all the delegates. And if I was more articulate, I would probably be able to say that more eloquently. But I, I just want to put that before the delegates. Okay. Thank you. Oh, brothers and sisters. After hearing all of that, Wilson came up and said, no, we don't want to hear that. We don't care. We're going to play the next clip entitled, We Don't Care, Vote No. Have you seen that? We don't care, vote no. Let me know when you're ready. Not mandated that people take the vaccine. It has given people a choice. So rather than for us to become embroiled in something which is not an agenda item for a general conference, it is an administrative item. It has been dealt with. Some people don't like the way it has been dealt with, and that is their right. But rather than for us to become embroiled in something that is not an item for a general conference session discussion, we respectfully, kindly, and very much in a determined manner ask that you, the delegates, vote no on placing this item as an agenda item. No, he's not supposed to say that. He came up in spite of the Adventist members pleading, especially in Canada, as you just heard from that lady, in Canada, where it's very, very harsh over there, the restrictions. But he came up and said, no, because I'm in charge. I rule over you. So what I say must go. And after Ted Wilson said this, some of the delegates started to conform. And one delegate came up and said, I agree with Elder Wilson. This issue, we don't need to bring it up because usually it will take five years for us to discuss a matter. And then there was applaud. Listen, we're going to play the clip entitled the applaud to vote against it. You see it? All right, let's play it. Ready? By the number of applauds, I hear that there is a strong support by the delegation not to include the item. Okay, thank you very much. Then we will proceed to vote, and we will vote by standing. So I will ask everyone who is here, if you would like to include, if you support the amendment, then I would like to ask you to stand. If you don't want to include it, then remain the sitting. But people on Zoom, since you have a good internet connection, I would like you to vote. If you are against of including it, then please vote against it. Motion to amend. What does the word amend mean? change but in what context it says motion to amend to add the issue of the babylonian sorcery to the general conference session agenda motion to amend that meaning what huh whether huh to add to it right or to bring it up to discuss it right or at the same time to not even talk about it at the same time. Well, brothers and sisters, after Ted Wilson said what he said, and then they applaud, and then uh, they're starting to vote on that, if you, we delegates want to bring that, not, remember, that's what the vote was about. If we want to bring this issue for a discussion, that's what the vote was about. That means it's, it's, in, it's, it's not even there yet, right? It's not even there yet. 
Now, what would be a good reason for Ted Wilson to say no, brothers and sisters? Think about it. As I think about this, what would be a good reason for him to say no after he heard the plea from the Seven Day Adventist members? <laughs> Very good. The billions of dollars they're getting from the government. And bowing to the papacy. Now, listen, there is a brother. As I was going over the clips, and then this morning, I came across that. I didn't realize that this was there. There was one brother who was on Zoom. Prepare the clip that says one man standing up against Ted. You see that one? Prepare that one. There was that one brother this morning as I was going over them. And then I, 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 I heard it. And I said, wait, that brother got my attention there. He was on Zoom. Uh, I think he was from Trinidad and Tobago. Yeah. He... He was participating because you, could, you can participate. I want you, it's about a two minutes video clip I'm going to play for you. Listen carefully to what this man said, how he stood up to Ted Wilson. And Ted Wilson was there. At the end of the video, after he was done speaking, you're going to see the arrow pointing at Ted Wilson. Laughing. Get that ready. Ready? Yes, I mean. All right, good yes. day, everybody. Yes, please. It, it's it's a point of order. Yes, please. If a motion if a motion is on the table, it must and it has been seconded, there should be an opportunity for discussion. It has not been allowed for, first of all. Secondly, we have not yet confirmed, which is what we were trying to do in the initial stages of this business meeting. We have not yet confirmed if everyone is in a position to vote, especially by election body. Because we, we did all the regularization, the confirmation initially, and we got a thousand plus votes. But then there were issues raised with the voting process. And you can't have, you can't have a, a meeting of people with hands people with legitimate hands who can raise it and have them feeling as if they have no hands that they can't even vote so on many on many different grounds what is happening is wrong i'm not even going to the issue of the vaccine or why it is wrong or why or why mr wilson's um, um expression might might really need some some reflection in that if, if we are going what mr wilson says then we might as well take out the 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 the, 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 the fundamental belief about Christian behavior from our books, because that fundamental belief speaks to the issue of taking care of our temples. That fundamental belief speaks to the use of intelligent use of narcotics and drugs. It speaks to us dealing with those issues. So if we are going the way of that vote to not discuss a crit critical divisive issue, then we might as well take out that from the books. And I must say, this church has never been afraid of divisive issues. And I'm noticing the language, come on, consensus unity come on consensus unity we've got to be careful we got to be careful about those agendas time running out but i'll say in closing very very simply very very simply brethren let's think this is our church let's not be guided by by words and the and the semantics of words let's stand up for our church thank you very much we have another point of order microphone number five solomon maposa you see that Watson laughing back there it was in your face. He stood up for the church. And then Ted Wilson was laughing at what he said. And then soon after he finished saying this, remember, while he was saying this, they were voting. While he was saying this, they were voting. The quote-unquote voting. And then let's prepare the final clip. You see it? The final vote against it. Let me know when you're ready. All right, Mr. Chairman, the vote is being closed here. It will be displayed momentarily. All right. So you can is. see it. We have 1,581 people that would like to stop all the discussion. 291 for it. So the discussion is ceased. We will not accept any more comments. And we will proceed immediately to the actual amendment. There you have it. So they turned it down. It did not even come up 
to the floor for a discussion. The influence of Ted Wilson. Hence, brothers and sisters, the falling away. Because the health message comes first. The what? The health message comes first before the loud cry. If you reject the health message, then you cannot be part of the loud cry message. There's no way. You cannot be part of it. When Jesus did his healings, they took place first, then come follow me. Follow me for what? To preach. Preach the gospel. That's part of the falling away. The general conference has fallen. Ted Wilson is a dictator. He is usurping authority over the flock of God as if he is king. Say that again. The altar boy, yeah. This sounds very similar to Phariseeism of all. I don't want to take the time, I want to wrap this up here. But 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, again, beginning verse 2 and verse 3, which read that before the second coming of Jesus Christ, there shall be a falling away first. And then the men of sin will be revealed. It's not going to be the general conference, brothers and sisters. Jesus is coming again. Which Jesus they are referring to? It is not the Christ of the Bible. It is another Christ. It's a, it is a counterfeit. Jesus that they are talking about. It is a Jesus that will unify the whole world. No. My Bible tells me Jesus is coming for a remnant. Revelation 14, 17 or Revelation 12, 17, Revelation 14, 12. The Laodicean, the falling away, is here. Listen to what Spirit of Prophecy tells us here. Testimonies to ministers, 265, paragraph 1. The world must not be introduced into the church and married to the church, forming a bond of unity. Listen now. Through this means... The church will become indeed, what's the next word? Corrupt. And what else? And as stated in Revelation, a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. What passage of Revelation she quoted there and applied it to the church? Revelation 18. Mm -hmm. Beginning in verse 2 and verse 4, which describes... Babylon. I was saying that the age, the age is another word. Deception. Yeah. Cage, I mean cage. The cage. Yeah, oh, you said age. I was thinking for a moment. Yeah, cage. A deception. So she says the world must not be introduced into the church. Has the world been introduced into the church? Yes. The Babylonian sorcery, the Babylonian poison has been introduced into the church. And so therefore... Not my words, the spirit of prophecy's words, that as a result of that, the organization has become a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. Hence, the general conference has fallen, brothers and sisters. Let me take you as we close now to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 again. Where are we heading to? 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. The general conference indeed has fallen. You would have to either don't care or you are just, or you just love Ted Wilson or the general conference so much that you would not say anything about this. As a matter of fact, when I put that video out two days ago, people are already telling me that all kinds of things. One guy is already bashing me on Facebook. Somebody sent me some screenshot of this guy bashing me on Facebook because I said Ted Wilson is a Jesuit. Listen carefully. Uh, where are we heading to? Second Thessalonians? Yeah, chapter 2. Uh, listen to what the Bible says. It went on to say again, the context again, was the second coming of Jesus Christ. The apostasy will take place first, the men of sin will be revealed. And then listen to where I believe 
the General Conference of Seven Adventists is right now. The Bible says, verse 9, even him, the wicked one, whose coming is after the working of Satan, with all power and signs and lying wonders, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish. Why? Because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. Many Seventh-day Adventists today are doing the same thing. Regardless of what you show them that the GC is doing, they don't want to hear it. They go after me, after the messengers out there, that are exposing, that are calling God's people, as Paul was pleading with the leadership in Acts chapter 20, with tears in his eyes, to guard the flock of God from wolves that will come among them, in spite of how clearly we can see the same thing that happened during the time of Christ. How the church itself under this inspiration of the leadership, rose up against Christ and crucified him. Today, many are ready to do the same thing. No wonder Jesus says that the time will come that they will lay hands on you and they will kill you and they will think that they are doing what now? They are doing a favor to God. And this is where we are. And when Jesus said that, he was talking about the church. Yeah, Revelation 16 there, threefold union. And that's where we are. Let's continue. It says, listen, in verse 11, And for this cause God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. When Ted Wilson stood up and said, vote no. Don't bring this issue to the floor. There was an applaud. They believed a the lie, brothers and sisters. They bought into the Babylonian poison. Let's move on. It says that they all might be them who believe not the truth, but have pleasure in unrighteousness. But we are bound to give thanks always to God for you, brethren, beloved of the Lord, because God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation through how? Through sanctification of the spirit and belief of the what again? Of the truth. Well, brothers and sisters, we cannot receive the outpouring of the Holy Spirit if we don't believe the truth, if we are not standing up for the truth. Because as the apostle says here, and Jesus also says, it's the truth that will sanctify us. Sanctification of the Spirit and belief of the truth. Many Seventh-day Adventists, our dear brothers and sisters, are perishing. I believe soon and very soon, we're going to see the final Fulfillment of the prophecy which tells us that at the passing of the National Sunday Law, probation will close for Seventh-day Adventists. And I believe, brothers and sisters, the Sunday Laws are already here. I believe this is already happening. But I pray that each one of us here will search our heart that we will not be missed out that we will be among, just like the disciples, in the upper room, just 120 in the upper room, just a few of them receive the early rain. Brothers and sisters, we are about to experience the shower, the latter rain power. It's coming. It's the apostasy, the falling away first, and the National Sunday Law together that brings about the latter rain. And those two things are here. They are already here. Are you ready for the Holy Spirit power? Let's pray. Amen. Loving Lord, Father God, which art in heaven, have thine own way, Lord. Have thine own way. You are the potter, we are just the clay. Lord, help us to humble ourselves indeed to the dirt so that you might raise us up. Lord, I pray in a special way for each one of us here that we should take heed, as the Apostle Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, lest we fall. I pray that 
we will see, each one of us here, those listening online, we will see our mission now, our responsibility now, that we have to take up, as Peter Barfi says, individual work. Because we cannot rely on the leadership to lead us anymore. We have to keep our eyes on the Lamb, Jesus Christ, to go wherever He wants us to go, whatever He wants us to do. Lord, help us to put our full trust and confidence in You so that when You come again, we might hear the good words. Well done, that good and faithful servant. Forgive us, we pray of all our sins in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you.